is it rolling now yeah oh okay so this is it guys welcome episode one of what does it take and we are here we are here to record no guests today because it's like the intro episode obviously joined by are you going to be my co-host or am i the co-host i'm your co-host we're hosting is, together yeah do you mean i'm co-hosted together yeah, so she's my co-host and I'm her yeah. co-host. It's an equal hosting partnership, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> anyway, it's Georgia, because I'm putting this on Spotify as well, mm -hmm. if I can work it out. Yeah. So some people can't view this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is Georgia speaking. My... And Spotify is normally way more common than people actually watching stuff anyway. Yeah, people like to, that's how I listen to podcasts. I walk, I walk and listen. I don't really watch it much. I, I only watch things when I'm eating and I don't like to sit and watch people talking usually. No. I like to watch people doing things when I'm eating. Because this isn't interesting to watch. No, no, we're not interested to watch. <laughs> or probably listen to. <laughs> great. Give me a great podcast. No, so this is the channel where we get the channel, this podcast, we are going to talk about what does it take to be a competitor in bodybuilding, male, female, and basically, we're going to really dive into the mindset behind it, the training, the nutrition, uh, PEDs, if the competitors are happy to talk about it, and any coaches they're working with, things like that. And we're basically going to try and get category winners, show overall winners on the show, and sort of just interview them, really, to, to give people that haven't competed before, or, or anyone that's interested in bodybuilding, a bit of an insight into what it's like and what it's about. Because it is a tough sport, right? It's like 24-hour sport. Yes, it's that... It's that thing of doing something that not a lot of people can do because it is so hard, isn't it? It's that next level. So doing it is hard, but the like what you learn about yourself is something that I always think is so amazing. After my first prep, like mm. it was like unlocking a new mindset level because you've done something that's so hard but so rewarding. That's true. That's something that I want to do on each episode as well. Is like try and get something. No, try and get them to say something they've learned about themselves on each prep as well, like all our guests, because there is always something, isn't there? Mm, my outlook, like, changed a lot after doing it. It was a very, like, I like to think I'm a positive person anyway, but it was more of a positive, like, like I said, you've achieved something, haven't you? So you've proven mm. to yourself that you can achieve it. Yeah. It's just, just doing it, isn't it? Just doing it. My last la lesson I learned on my last prep is you can always be leaner. <laughs> well, for men... There's an issue with bikini girls. Yes, you can be They're too lean for different bikini. Different for different categories. But we'll get into that in a future <laughs> episode, maybe. Um, so yeah, that's basically the plan for the channel. So anyone, if if anyone has any suggestions for people, we've basically put it on our Instagram, and I've got quite a few people putting their names forward already or suggesting people that have competed. Um, so we've got a bit of a list already, which is absolutely awesome. Like, there's been quite a bit of interest for this. So I think it'd be really good. I haven't seen- If there was interest, we could actually talk about ours since we've recently done a prep. Like what your prep was like for you. And what yeah. What was like for me. I guess we could. Because we have done it ourselves as well. We right? are competitors <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> so yes. we could still talk about ours in an episode because we had different journeys and still had different things and different shows and we still did different things. I'll tell you what, we'll see what the time is when, because we've got something we want to talk about today, um, which you already know what it is because I'm putting it as the title. Um, when is the right time to potentially go on to PEDs? If we've got time after that, maybe we can go into our prep then? Or maybe do you think we need a full next, hour? Next podcast. I've already got a guest. Our journey. I've already, got, guest. I've already got a guest lined up Absolutely for next guest. week. <laughs> yeah, we'll take over yeah, the guest we one. can do another podcast in a minute. There's no one weekly pop. We can release them. More than one a week. Well, we can release we them. We don't want to bore them. <laughs> <laughs> you release them once a week, but there's no time limit that if we did one now. We'll discuss this. As you can tell, this is all off the cuff. We haven't <laughs> really planned this <laughs> too much yet. But yeah, um, we can we can definitely go into that. Um, but yeah, that's the goal anyway. So we're going to try and alternate. So we, I want to make it as even as possible to to cater for all audiences. So I want that's why I wanted to co-host this with Georgia because she knows a lot of bikini competitors. Um, so we can get them on board and then and like, we'll get alternate between girls. yeah figure girls. So basically, I want to alternate between female competitors and male competitors uh, because it is it is different. It is mm. different between male and females, how yeah. they approach it, you know, hormone regulation, everything. Like there's a big, big difference between the two. Um, so I think it'd be really cool to do that. But yeah, so that's future plans. But anyway, I think we should dive into today's topic. Okay. Shall we? Cool. <laughs> 
So when is the right time to go on to PDs? Um, the reason why I wanted to talk about this first is because it genuinely does come up uh, a lot with my guys. I'd say my guys now, um, I would say a quarter of them are assisted, three quarters natural. Whereas compared to last year, I think I only had one assisted athlete. And it's more the fact, like, because whether you're natural or assisted, you always want to listen to more information on it. Like Sarah, Sarah, her podcast, she has a lot of natural people wanting to find out more because it is one of those things where whatever you're doing, natural or assisted, you want to find out more information about it. Well, yeah, that's it's that's never really such thing as too much information. That's about very, it. very important. Self education before <laughs> even going down that route. Um, but in a general sense, if someone asks me this question, when's the right time to go on? Do you think I should go on? Uh, my advice is always no. I try and always try and persuade people not to go down this route. But ultimately, everyone's an adult. They, they've always, they're always going to make up their own minds. And if they do decide to go down that route, then I will try and best guide them to my ability as mm. much as possible. Um, you don't... you. Georgia really works with lifestyle people. Yeah. So she doesn't really get this much. I always say to a lot of, because men, tip, Matt typically deals with the men and I deal with the female. And then if we do have competitors, it's a bit of working together. So you're, you like the men aspect, especially the competitor side. And if I ever speak about anyone and they say, what do you do? And you say, oh, my coach, I didn't really get it. So normally I say, I help females be able to eat chocolate and lose weight. That's like the best caption. Yeah, to, to, to cater to lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, George doesn't really get this question and come up too much. But I like learning have, about it because yeah. of being in the industry myself, of being in the competitive world. I like learning about it, but I never have to, you know, I just have to And you've definitely got your own opinions on it as well. Yeah, everyone has an opinion on it and everyone... Everyone has an opinion to them as an individual and to everyone as a competitor, as an individual. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah everyone, everyone has their own opinion. Yeah, right? everyone, everyone has an opinion. Oh. You should always have an opinion on it. And I think it's always a case of, you know, you shouldn't just go on it for the sake of going it and thinking that's going to be the thing that just changes everything. Yes, that is a very good point. I know which angle you're going at now. <laughs> so yeah, that's a very good point. So PEDs, it's always worth knowing that it is just icing on the cake. And this is one of the first thing I would say to someone if they made that decision, that adult decision that they are going to go down this route. It's just the icing on the cake. Like you'll see it all the time, like an incredible transformation or, or pro physique. And you always get that internet warrior that types up down below, oh, amazing what you can do with steroids. No, <laughs> like, no, that's not what this is about. Like, if you don't have the fundamentals in place, your training, your nutrition, your recovery, everything, you are going to still look like shit. Like, it doesn't matter if you chuck gear in your system. Like, yeah, you might temporarily look good if you've got genetics and you have a good intergenetic response to those uh, PEDs. But afterwards, when you come back off, those fundamentals aren't in place. You're going to look like shit again, or potentially you could look worse after. So you've definitely got to have those fundamentals in place. And it's literally just, it is the icing on the cake. And never discredit someone's um, progress or efforts, even if they are on PEDs, because you still have to put in so much work to get there. Um, and that, that does frustrate me quite a lot when I, when I see that. You... Yeah. And I think, it's, <laughs> I think it's more the fact, it's quite funny to see if someone looks really good, it's automatically steroids it's automatically yeah. gear do you remember like when i used to train at a gym quite a few years ago and they automatically just assumed that i was i don't think i had competed or anything and they just assumed i and i was just like no like i genetically have like see that see my sisters we have broad shoulders like that's something I you were gonna say i'm genetically superior <laughs> <laughs> genetically a <obese>. beast <laughs> No, but that's, you know, so you shouldn't be quick if that, but also I was astounded to find out, obviously, uh, not to stereotype, and I don't know, I'm, you're just a male species, that normally men are the ones that, uh, yes, they are really, really good, or they look like poo, and actually they, they've got a lot of stuff going on, and it's because they haven't used it, so, you know, it is that thing of, like, don't be a keyboard warrior if someone looks really good and say it's drugs, but then also, actually, there's so many people out there that are using stuff 
like that I've never heard of and they they don't look like anything at all because the steroids aren't doing anything because they're not well they're probably doing something but because they haven't got the training and nutrition so everything works like hand in hand with everything doesn't it really yes yeah like I said before you have to have those fundamentals in place but I just realized we've gone on a massive tangent and we come away from the question <laughs> instantly so <laughs> sorry about that so Yes, yeah, so they've made that adult decision to go on. I told them already that it's, uh, you know, you shouldn't do it, but if they do decide to go down that route, um, I do heavily advise in self-educating, first of all, but also having someone to guide you. Now, you know, I always think to myself, like, if someone asks me, what qualifies you to guide someone on this? I'm not, I'm not qualified. And no one really is. That's the crazy thing. This industry is unregulated. Yes, you have people that are a lot more educated than others, but no one is actually qualified to give anyone guidance on this. So everyone needs to realize that and, um, you know, and take that into account when they do, if they do decide to go down this route as well. Um, but yes, self-education is really, really important. I think it's more who seems to have a very, like, responsible approach. Like, when I listen to you chatting to your guys, like, you are very much get your bloods done. You're very much, let's check this out. You're very much, you know, you'll, you, you'll lay out a massive plan first and have a lot of structure and you will talk to them about a lot of stuff. Or are you going to be of a coach and they just go, this is it, get on with it like yeah you because it, it is a health thing and like that's what I've learned from like listening from podcasts and listening to you chat to you guys and stuff it is a case of like what are you you know you you do have to be sensible with it yeah to make sure you don't screw yourself long term for the short term gains that's right <laughs> yeah because you you're not going to turn into Mr Olympia from doing one cycle right so you need to be able to do it long term if you do want to do it. Mm. So health needs to be at the forefront of your mind before you do anything. And unless you're longevity. like a pro and things like that, you've got to remember, yes, there's a, there's a difference from lifestyle and then doing this for fun and all this kind of stuff. But then also bearing in mind, like we said, you're not going to be doing this forever. And you're going to have like you might have kids, family, you know, you've got another job, things like that. Like you've got other priorities, which, yes, lifting and the gains are something really important but you've got to think like like you said longevity of it of mm. this short term of just getting massive yeah <laughs> this is where a lot of people get get confused i think they think you they do do one cycle and they pack on like tremendous amounts of muscle now in some cases that might happen as i said before there is an intragenetic response to cycles and to steroids just like any other drug that's why some people can drink and they get absolutely hammered and steaming after a couple of pints. Some people don't. You know, everything is very individual. Um, but yeah, you do need to have the longevity there and, and realize that you're in it for the long haul if you do want to use them to progress in the sport. Um, so that's probably what I want to move on to now. That's like a good segue is like, when is the right time to go on them? It's if it aligns with your long term goal and if that's going to be worth it to you, that risk to reward ratio. Like I always say, I've said this a few times, if like, I don't agree with people doing it for just um, aesthetic purposes, especially if they're not looking after their health. Like I, I say this because I know so many people that just blast gear without really knowing what they're doing. They don't do PCT, they don't train hard, their nutrition is absolutely shit. Um, and they do it to just look good on the weekend. What's PCT? <laughs> post cycle therapy <laughs> what you do after well, i cycle. don't know when people listening might not yeah, know yeah that's so. fair that's fair yeah <laughs> that's good actually I'm you should ask for the people yeah. that don't know because i don't know so it's like the person that knows and doesn't that's good actually you should ask these questions yeah because <laughs> oh, well, otherwise i get carried away <laughs> so that's very good yeah um uh what was i saying blood's post cycle therapy yes yes so if you're doing it you've got to analyze your reason why basically is what i'm getting to if your reason why is to just look good on the weekend you can achieve fantastic results by not going on steroids like trust me like if you get the again going back to the fundamentals get those in place you can make absolutely amazing progress but even as a competitor now i do want to say there's really really good like opportunities for natural competitors too uh -huh. like there's quite I've a got few some of my girls doing natural shows all i think all of, all of are our natural girls shows. are naturals this year yeah yeah so um there's really really good opportunities like before there was like a couple of small natural shows but no one really like knew about them and things like that but now there's like 
big international opportunities if you do well within the UK scene. The UK natural bodybuilding scene actually is really, really quite uh, mm. at to a high level, um, which is good because that's going to push you further as well. Yeah, it's seen as respected just as much as like Fit X and yes. it's a show to kind of do alongside those kind of shows. Absolutely, absolutely. But being realistic now this is the time when you know i would never say someone to go on them as i said before but i do need to be realistic with someone if they came to me and said that they do want to be an ifbb pro for example and they want to go to the olympia i'm i'm going to say to them like you, you don't matter how good your genetics are is it so so incredibly unlikely you well, would ever setting achieve up that. realistic goals yes. for your expectations isn't it it's yeah. if someone came to us and showed a picture of whoever some sort of pro as a extra there's yeah setting realistic goals and setting realistic like limits to what you can achieve and some people are can do so 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 much and some people uh, you have to then just be like okay we can't like that might not be within reach but what we can do yeah is this like you don't have to like poo poo ideas just because someone might not be out like genetically or what but you can still always give other options to things but it's still being realistic with it so you're not setting someone up to fail and we're, we're very much realistic with what we can do and achieve and things like that as well yeah. isn't it that's going to be the biggest thing so and again that's what you want to go with with a coach you want to go with someone that's going to be realistic with you support you mm. and you know help you with what you want to achieve but be realistic with you rather than tell you you know promise you the world and just take your money <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah you want to pay a coach basically that's going to tell you uh what you need to hear not what you want to hear sometimes for sure like mm. if for example, you've got someone that just it hasn't got great genetics. Uh, and this happens a fair bit in the industry as well. They are on a cycle, okay? Um, and then they want to get further in bodybuilding. They want to progress up the ladder. So the only um, way a coach would know how is to just up the gear. But sometimes I think that's a really, really bad mindset to have because obviously the higher drugs you take, the more drugs you take, the more side effects you're going to get, and the more your health markers are going to get fucked um but also that person which is this is the most important thing i would say that person is still not going to achieve what they want to achieve so they they're fucking themselves over for no reason because their coach didn't tell them that it's an unrealistic goal i think okay what's your thoughts on that yeah no definitely and it is a case of just you know who whoever you're with it needs to be it needs to be where you you respect them and they respect you back Mm. enough like you're not just a number you are someone that you know you see as working as a team and they'll get you to your goals but like I said especially when it comes to competing there's pro level is an, is another level and it is it does take work and it does take years and it's something a lot of people that just kind of want to compete sometimes don't really think about mm. but at the same time there are going to be some people that like that want to compete and you think oh yeah get in there because they they've got the you know they've they've got the makeup they've got the mindset they've got the time and the patience to make it happen so it is just you know understanding that when there's a time it's for everyone there's a limit on you know what federation is for everyone or what yeah. like and that's the thing because yeah. anyone it's the same as any like, sport it's the same as yeah. any sport like you can get into football football's for everyone right but not everyone's going to make it to the premier league yeah only a very small percentage will because of their genetic, because of their work ethic, yeah. everything they put into it hmm. gets them to that level. It's exactly the same with yeah. bodybuilding. Like you can't, every, everyone can get into bodybuilding, right? But what you're just saying is not everyone can be at that top level and you need to analyse analyze that, mm -hmm. okay, and be very realistic with yourself because taking more drugs will not solve that issue. That's the sort of, right, the point yeah. we're trying to make, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And also understanding that it, it takes a lot of time. It isn't going to be a case of Absolutely. just sticking some drugs in your system and hoping for some top shows next year. Exactly. Yeah, it does take time. It does take time. Um, so I think that kind of, yeah, to round it all up then, I'm going to make a round up statement. Um, so remember, I probably should have said this at the start. We're not doctors. We're actually advising you to not do any of these things. And this is just <laughs> for um, entertainment purposes only. But if someone says, like, when is the right time to go on? I would say, once again, once all the fundamentals are in place, if they are fully bought into bodybuilding and they want to progress up the sport, 
Um, and if they have either self-educated themselves to a, a decent level, or they have someone in their corner guiding them through the process, um, then I would say perhaps we could take it to that next level. Um, but again, I would never say to that to someone actually, I would let them make that decision and then I would guide them. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm quite against coaches that say you should do this, you should do that straight out of the bat for sure. Yeah, it should be something that you decide and you look into and then the person you go to for that help and advice should be someone that's very cautious about it as well to a degree and be like assess your physique as well because like you said if you're if you're really trying to push you know pro and everything then yes possibly and things like that but you know listening to the way you are with your guides your guys have to you know they have to be the one that like initiates it first you do a lot of research on things you will then give them like a load of talk about a load of stuff um give them loads of advice and then it's i would on present them. options yeah it's on them to then make decisions and use support and help rather yeah. than be like this is what you need to do yeah. going off things and like i said it's things like bloods and you know supporting them with their decisions because that's all you can do really you can never be the one to say do all this yeah yeah 100 percent. so i think we answered that question quite well and we did it in a pretty good time i don't know what time we started I want these podcasts to be about 45 minutes. I think that's a good time. Um, I've no idea what time we started, but I think we've got some time left. So I think we should segue into like, if someone does decide to go down this route, they've got maybe a bit of guidance, a bit of support. What's, what's the first thing that they should be looking at uh, doing? And I would say, first of all, no matter what, is get your blood work done. Because even as a natural competitor, it's still a really good idea to get your blood work done just to see where you're at to start with like as as well with men because i assume you want to check testosterone levels and things like that but when it comes to females as well before you start prep you want to make sure everything's healthy you want to make sure because uh, prep is an unhealthy thing like you're pushing to levels especially again as because obviously i talk as a female because that's what i normally work with is you know you're going to push your body to body fat levels that it doesn't want to go to you know your body wants to hold fat it wants to have babies it wants to be normal it doesn't want to be like lean and so when you then you know you might lose your cycle uh, on um, throughout your prep and things like that so after is always advised you know let's do your blood you know a few weeks after let's see what's you know going well what isn't how can we help you know bring those calories back up then reassess them you know i think i've done them twice since so i did them like a few weeks about four weeks after my show and then i did them again around january time to see how things are sitting and i'm due to do them again in a few months purely just for health just to see, especially as I'm doing such a long, improve. I did such a long prep and I'm planning on doing a long off season. I, you know, if I want to do this properly, I want to make sure that my body's playing ball with me. If I'm going to put myself into these states voluntarily of being not happy with my body or not healthy, so to speak, I've got to make sure that when I do have this opportunity, I am looking after it. So, you know, pushing to the depths of prep and things like that, and then not doing something like bloods just seems so silly because you're you know you're making that decision in yourself drugs or not to you know to damage your body to a certain degree you want to make sure it's healthy when it can be healthy yeah well healthy to start with is yeah. the if you're starting off this journey prep going down the route of peds and your body's already fucked then that's when things like side effects are really going to come mm. into play and you, you know your health markets are going to go very very much downhill so yeah george is absolutely right so before you start a prep in her case you should get blood work done but also if you were to think about going down this route you should get your blood work done first because if for example i don't know your cholesterol's way out your red blood cell count is super high um your blood pressure you should get your blood pressure done as well if that's already really elevated then starting an androgenic steroid cycle is a very, very bad idea. You want to get all these things in place, first of all. You want all your markers to be in green before you even think about going down this route. Um, once again, going back to people that I know, they've never got their blood work done. They actually already know that their blood pressure is horrendous and they still do cycles. Uh, I've, I think it's crazy. Um, you definitely, you know, th these aren't things to mess around with um and it, like we keep saying if you want to get somewhere if you do want to put on a, a good amount of muscle even if it's just for like cosmetic purposes and feel good on the weekend you want to be able to 
achieve that goal of putting on a lot of muscle. You're not going to be able to achieve that if you have a heart attack after a couple of cycles because your blood pressure is through the roof. Mm. Right? Yeah. And it's it's like I was saying about the whole getting your blood done just for health. So even just for me, just making sure my health was, you know, better after show or before show or whatever, you know, looking after myself, I want to make sure that I've, you know, I'm getting the best for myself. So when you then add things like steroids or something on top, you know, you you can pay out for the steroids, but you can't pay out for a blood test. And you know the steroids is going to, you know, do certain things to you, whatever it may be, in the sense of hormones or whatever. You want to make sure that, you know, if you can do that side of it, you should do the other side where you look after your blood to make sure everything's, you know, you're doing everything as a whole. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we hear that, like, not with our clients or anything like that, but we have heard it before being said, I don't want to pay for a blood test, it's too expensive. Or, or, or I've heard this before, I'll just get my doctor to do it. Like, like no, the doctors do not test all the biomarkers that you can pay for with mm. a private lab. You, they just don't. And for competing, like as a as a female, drugs or not, my logic was like, well, if I'm going to pay for like a sparkly bikini, if I'm going to pay for like some heels or like a tan that's seventy yeah. quid, yeah, like you'll pay for it when you see it's a necessity. That's what it is. So that's what I feel like when I think of like but health should guys be a necessity with drugs. Mm. Like again, not to stereotype, but that's because of from what I've seen with guys is that uh, guys tend to be like, well, they want the gear because it's going to make them big, but the bloods are irrelevant because they've been this long without bloods. Yeah. But I think it's I think it's good. It's becoming very very much more aware of a thing to do. Health is becoming more important, which yeah. is such a good thing. Like you've got the blood lab going around as well as MediChecks, but blood lab is like actually visiting places now, so it's like a bit easier. Yeah. So I do think it is something that's, which is good. It's becoming more aware to, you know, look after yourself as well. Yeah, 100%. And like going back to your doctor, like your doctor won't know what to do unless, I don't know, they might, they might know what to do if they're, if they're in, if they know about the industry or they've researched it. But I don't think they have the facility to just test someone's full panel biomarkers that you need to get tested um off the bat i don't mm. think they have that ability i've certainly never heard of it anyway so yeah you do need to go to a private lab to do it so yeah we recommend either medicheck or blood labs uh we haven't worked with blood labs personally have really really good things. We have heard good things just we've gone through medichecks and they've been fantastic anyway and um, with medichecks i don't know with blood lab but with medichecks when i did because mine was like post Right, right, my first one, I could write notes. So when I sent my blood sample in, it was like, where am I in my cycle? Um, and it was like anything in particular I need to know. So I did say like 10 months, it's been a 10 month prep. Um, I've been on this amount of food, blah, blah, blah. And so when they bring things back to me and obviously things aren't looking at very healthy, not long after show, but they know why. So they can be like, this is why you need to do this. So they give mm -hmm. notes back, which is really, really useful. So the next time I did it, I can be like, okay, so I've missed many months post, everything should be fine. Um, post my shows and, you know, food is at his and then it just makes a little bit more sense when you get that feedback too. Yeah, so labs, yeah, give pretty good feedback. And if you're working with a coach or someone that knows about these sort of things as well, they can recommend certain things to get the biomarkers that are out, if there are any out, back in the green, uh, which is really, really important. Um, now, further down the line, after a few cycles, you know, there's other things that you can check for. You can get your heart scanned and things like that. But I'm talking about before you do your first ever one, um, then that is the bare minimum, I would say, is to find out where your natural levels are at, um, get your blood pressure done um, before you even think about it, I would say. Mm -hmm. right? So I think that's it. I think we pretty much covered that. Yeah. That's what we really wanted to talk about on the first yeah. episode. I have no idea how long this was. Sorry if we blabbed on. And I know we've gone off on loads of tangents, but I think our general message has been there. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So next week's episode, we're going to try and do this weekly. We are going to get a guest on. I've got a couple of guests that have come forward already. Um, George has only just put it on a story. So we'll probably have a female guest on the week after. Um, but yeah, as I said, we're going to really try and dive into like their mindset and uh, the nutrition, the training, if they worked with a coach, their PED usage, if they're happy and comfortable to talk about that. If not, that's not a problem. And what it took for them to get to the stage and if they won their category or if they won that at the overall position, uh, we want to dive into what it took them to achieve that goal, which I think is a pretty cool series. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. So we're going to do that. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any suggestions of who we uh, could interview, mm -hmm. uh, then just pop them below and we're, we're more than happy to reach out to them, see if they're up for doing it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you do subscribe, please. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one.
Cheers.